Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to treat noisy vocals. Some of you have asked about how to treat a vocal that has some noise in it, some hissing or noise in the background. And so I'm making this video just to show you kind of how to remove some of the sound that you have. One thing I will say about editing noise from a mic is that you need to think about how you're recording it because if you record noise into the mic, it's gonna come out that way and you're gonna to have to compromise something along the way. The best thing you can do is to ensure that you have a nice clear input going into the mic and there's no background noise and anything like that. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do some of that, but it will remove some quality and you'll see in one of the examples, it doesn't work very well. So my recommendation to you is to make sure that you are recording in a controlled environment. There aren't a lot of sounds going on. Uh, it's not very echoey or reverberant. And if you have other things, then the best thing to do is just to ensure that you are recording properly and well, rather than trying to make shortcuts in post. If it's really bad, go through it and do it again. So when people talk about removing noise, it comes down to a few things. Some of the times it's stuff like people shutting a door in the same house that you're recording in and so you hear a sound from that. If you can manage to cut them out in the gaps between someone talking or whatever input is going into the mic, then that's great and you can get away with that. If, however, that's overlapping the recording of the person singing or whatever is going into it, that might be hard to remove and you might just want to start again rather than try and get away with it. However, there are some things that you can do. Things like hiss or a sound of a car passing, anything that's somewhat steady tone, you can get rid of. Let me give you an example of something with a hissing sound. This is the mic that I use in the studio at work. So there is a bit of a hissing sound. It's not too big a deal though, because it just goes into the voiceover's headphones. But here's an example for you. This is the talkback mic in my work studio. Now, you might be able to hear there's quite a faint hissing, or it might be actually quite loud as I've turned the gain up. So as you heard there, there was quite a bit of hissing that could be removed quite easily using a plugin. If you're unable to use a plugin, I would suggest cutting off whenever there's silences and seeing how it sounds. When it's hidden in the background of music, if it's a vocal mic, for instance, then it's probably fine. You might get away with it. However, if you're doing a podcast or something where there's just the vocal, you might struggle to get away with that. And so you need to figure out a way of doing it. One way of doing it would be to use an EQ and remove the high frequencies. However, this will also remove some of the actual quality that we want in the vocal. Truly, the best way to do it is to use plugins. So I'm going to use a plugin by Isotope, and it's the RX7 series. You might not have RX7, you might have a lower version, but it works just as well. In fact, at work, I have the RX4 and it works just as good. The first thing you do, so you go to voice denoise, because that's what we're after. So you can see mine says as a trial because I actually don't personally have this plugin. I only use it at work, but I'm using a trial so that I can show you how it looks on Logic Pro. So what you do is you grab what it is you want to listen to. So we want to listen to this hissing. So what you want to do is you want to find a bit of hissing just on its own. And you can see that this is starting to pick it up. So in order for it to learn what it's doing, you need to make sure it learns the frequency. You can go to adaptive mode, which is an updated feature. But if you hit learn and then play the part you're wanting to remove, you'll notice slightly that these were moving up and down. Basically what this was doing was this was finding the frequencies that are there. And then basically from that you go learn, it's now learned that wave. And then we can select the actual audio. This is the talkback mic in my work studio. So now you notice that the hiss has been removed. This is quite easy as the hiss was fairly minimal and also it was very high pitch, so it was only capturing some higher frequencies. The plugin has a particular way of removing it and it works very well. You can also optimize it for musical dialogue if you wish to. So that's pretty straightforward. You'll also notice that there's a threshold and reduction. We might need to change this for 
other examples, but for this example, it works really well. Let's take a look at another example. So now we're going to look at this example. Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to remove noisy audio. So there, there was a sound of a car passing. Now where I usually record my videos for this, I'm actually near a street. So I tend to find car sounds passing, and that can be quite difficult. Sometimes I don't notice while I'm recording. Now let's see if we can try and remove that sound. Okay, so in order to remove that sound of the car passing, you need a clear sound of the car. Sometimes you might be able to get that. I get that quite a lot where I am, where it continues to rev and go past because I'm right by um, some level crossings. So you can do that. The other thing is to make sure you wait and record a sound that is a car passing. So let's see if we can do that here. So now that we've captured some of that car passing sound, let's try and actually put it on the vocal of me talking with the car passing and see if it's actually done anything. Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to remove noisy audio. Hey guys. Now you hear there, there's still a car passing sound, but it actually has helped and it has removed a lot of it. I could play around with the threshold and reduction, I feel like I've already lost a lot of quality of the sound. Now, fortunately, in RX7, you can play around with this. You can move around these parameters because I don't actually want a lot of the low end removed. I just need that kind of mid and high end sound of the car passing to be removed. So let's see if this sounds any better. Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to remove noisy audio. Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to remove noisy audio. Hey guys, and welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to look at how to remove noisy audio. Hey guys. So you see there, I've played around with it a bit. I don't want to mess too much with it. You notice the car sound's still in there, but it's very brief. And I think in general, people are very forgiving. They're not expecting a 100% clean sound. And if that is something that bothers you, then I recommend you really do take the time to record audio that is clean and there's no sound in the background because trying to remove it in post, as you can see, even with some nice plugins, isn't entirely possible. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something that is quite common within the broadcasting industry, which you might not be involved in right now, but it might be something you explore into later. If you're working with promotional videos to promote a TV series, typically the visual team will give you some grabs from the episode. Now, most of the time that's okay, and they have sync lines and they can separate the sync lines out. However, there's a lot of the time when you're dealing with an ad for a TV show and they have to grab a sound from the TV show. And typically there's music over these programs. So what ends up happening is then you get something that sounds like this. What the hell is he doing? Or this. What the hell is he doing? So you hear there that there is music in the background. Now, sometimes you might get away with that. You'll have music and other things in the way of that during the promo. However, you might still need to get rid of it. It might be uh, countering the sounds that you've already put in, the music track that you've put in there. So I'll show you what you can do. I'm not saying this is going to 100% work because I find most of the time it doesn't. But you might be able to reduce it enough that it will help with the mix. So we're going to open RX7 again. So first I need to grab a part that is just the music or just the background sound. So now I hit learn. And now we can play the entire sound and see if we've removed enough. What the hell is he doing? 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 
the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? And there's a faint sound in there, but I reckon with the music in the background, depending on how loud it is, it'll probably not be as clear. Let's try it with this one. What the hell's he doing? What the hell's he doing? What the hell's he doing? Okay, so this one seems to have a more longer section of just music with that guitar chord. So we're going to just loop the guitar bit. Hit learn. And then select the entire thing. What the hell's he doing? 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 So you hear there that it has removed some of that sound. And like I said before, it's the same sort of scenario. If that's played with some music, it's probably very likely that you won't hear it. And I'll obviously remove that empty space of just sound and no talking. What the hell's he doing? So now it sounds a lot clearer. This is more of an example to show you that no matter how hard you try, you may still have some sound in the background. So once again, can't say this enough, but when you want to record something, make sure it's 100% clear and there's no background noise in it. Now, this isn't to say for broadcasting issues when you're grabbing stuff from the TV show audio, this isn't impossible. There's one final example that I want to show you of how it can be done. And this is because the background sound isn't music, but it's a constant beeping sound. Do you see that? No. Do you see that? No. So that beeping sound, clearly there's a computer or something happening, but if the producer wants to take the sync line out of context so you don't see that there's a computer, then it might be a bit weird hearing the beeping. What we'll do is once again, open RX7, hit learn, and we want to just find a section where it's just beeping on its own. And that bit in between where they're talking is probably going to be perfect. You can hear there that it's actually a constant tone if I let it loop. So now that I've got that sound, I can now loop the entire track and see if I can remove it completely. Do you see that? No. 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 Do you see? Do you see that? No. 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 Do you see that? So there you can see I've almost entirely removed the sound. There is still a faint beeping sound, and if that was just sat there on its own, you'd probably be able to hear it, but this is gonna be layered with some music and some other sound effects. So it's probably gonna be completely inaudible. Okay, so those are the only examples really I'm gonna show you. The main one I really wanted to show you was this hissing noise one, because that's probably what you're most often gonna find if you've got some hissing noise from the power of your microphone, which, I'm having here with a cheap microphone, or if you've got air conditioning sound, which is a very constant tone. Basically, anything that's got a constant tone to it and isn't musical or random will be a lot easier to remove. Something like a bird chirping might be a bit more difficult. I just wanted to show you there is a way of doing it. The easiest way to do it is, unfortunately, with a plug-in. Isotope is quite expensive if you wanna buy them. I recommend you do if you really want to and you're going into broadcasting. That's mainly when I use it, as we don't really have an option in terms of getting a clean cut audio. We just get audio from programs and from TV shows that already have an unclean sound of background noise, music, etc. So we have to use Isotope in order to remove it. However, in this scenario, when you're perhaps recording a vocal for podcast or you're recording instruments, I just recommend the easiest way to ensure you have a clear vocal is just simply by recording it properly, making sure the mic is close to the source. I've talked about this in my microphone videos if you want to see more about that. If you want me to talk more about where to place mics, I can do a video on that if you like. 
but basically as long as it's close it's getting a clear signal and you make sure that you're in a controlled environment it will be much easier for you rather than trying to cut and chop it all out. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm sorry I can't really give you some free advice per se. You do need to buy a plugin, like I said, but it's all down to just getting it done properly the first time rather than being lazy and trying to fix it in post. So yeah, that is how you remove background noise. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And if there's something I haven't covered yet or you'd like me to cover, put it in the comments and I'll see if I get to it. This video was because someone commented on the fact they wanted to know how to treat vocals and so I made it for them. So if you comment something, I will take a look at it and consider making a video for it. I'm Sonically Sound and until next time, have fun mixing.